New details emerging late today about the moment a soldier became a mass shooter. ABC's David Muir has new clues about the gunman's mental health and stories of survivors who describe what it was like to be face to face with him. Once again, David is reporting from the scene at Fort Hood. David Muir. David. Diane, good evening. That's right. For the first time, a detailed account from inside that room, those horrific moments when that Army specialist opened fire. Tonight, a mother and father on their way to see their son, Sergeant Jonathan Westbrook, shot four times, one of the first hit. He survived. Theotis Westbrook driving from Mississippi to Texas, on the way telling us what his son revealed about how it played out. The moment Army Specialist Ivan Lopez opened fire. He was shot four times? Four times. What did your son tell you about what he witnessed right before the shooting? The soldier had come into his office and uh, he'd had some words with my son's supervisor. And he was asking for a, a, a form to execute a lead, some lead time. And uh, they suggested that he come back the next day. And so he left just as they had suggested that he leave, but only to return with a weapon, a 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol, handgun and uh, shot one person right in my son's presence and then turned the gun on my son, shooting him four times, twice in the arm and twice in the chest. And then he commenced firing randomly, and my son and him took cover on the desk and table. He says Lopez then left that office, went out onto the base, and kept firing. You describe your son getting shot twice in the chest and then two more times in the arm. Your son is lucky tonight to be alive. My son is a blessed human being. He is blessed. He was not shot from a very long distance. He was shot, you know, pretty close up. I hear your son's doing okay? Yeah, he's doing uh, much, much better. He's doing really good. He told me he will never forget the seven hours without hearing from his son. It was midnight before they heard his voice. When you heard about these shootings and you were able to get your son on the phone, what did you say to him? That I love you. I am so happy that you are all right. And tonight, for the first time, we're now hearing from his son. The next thing that was going through my head was my family, my wife, my children, my mom, my dad. You know, make sure I, I, I get safe so I can stay alive for them. And that's what I did. And the grace of God came out of that life. Tonight, authorities now acknowledging there was a verbal altercation here before the shootings and that some soldiers involved in that altercation were hit and that when he was done firing, he had covered an area as large as two city blocks. This evening, investigators say they're taking a closer look at his combat experience, those four months in Iraq. So far, they say no specific traumatic event, no contact with the enemy. And late today, they said they don't believe his mental health played a role in the shootings even though he had been given prescription drugs and had seen a psychiatrist here. And tonight, for the first time, Lopez's father back in Puerto Rico issuing a statement, saying he offers prayers to the victims and that his son could not have been in a sane state when the shooting occurred. And in the complex where Lopez lived with his wife and his three-year-old daughter, authorities have now searched the apartment and have talked to his wife. And this evening, we're hearing from the families of the soldiers who died. The mother of Sergeant Timothy Owens says she called her son the moment she heard about the shootings. He didn't answer the phone, so I left a message on his son. Son, call me so I know if you're okay or not. I thought, oh God, please don't let it be. And the fiance of Sergeant First Class Danny Ferguson, who has said he was killed while trying to save others, trying to hold a door shut. Behind it, a room filled with military personnel. And we're learning more about one of the heroes this evening. As emergency teams race to Fort Hood, we're now hearing that that chaplain who saved lives was wounded himself while helping others. He was actually shielding them from more gunfire, breaking windows to help them get out. And tonight, as a community prepares for memorial service next week, a veteran and the three crosses he's now placed in front of his church. A soldier killing a fellow soldier. That's just, that ain't the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way it's supposed to be. My son is awesome. That memorial service planned for next week. And that wounded chaplain, he's expected to be okay, Diane. And one more note tonight about two other heroes. They talked late today about two wounded soldiers who bravely reached for their cell phones to call 911, even though that specialist 
was still firing. Yeah, and I'm so struck, David, by what you said about the large area in which the gunman was firing. Thank you for leading us off again tonight.